Welcome back, everyone. We have a, another great talk coming up. Uh, it's called Cellular Automata to More Efficiently Compute the Collatz Map. It's a mathematical presentation, and our presenters are Stan Chen from Northview High School in Jonas, uh, Johns Creek, uh, Georgia, and Tim Wu from Parkview High School in Lilburn, Georgia. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning, my name is Stan Chen, and my name is Tim Wu, and our project was developing cellular automata to more efficiently compute the Collatz map. So our object of interest in this project is the Collatz function. It's a function defined on natural numbers that takes a number n to 3n plus 1 if n is odd, and to n over 2 if n is even. The Collatz conjecture, first stated in 1937, is a long-standing problem in number theory. It claims that given any initial input, after a finite number of iterations, it will become one. The trajectory of a given input is the sequence of its iterates, and the total stopping time for this input is the smallest number of iterations it takes for the input to become one. For example, the trajectory of six is the following sequence, and the total stopping time is eight because it takes eight steps to get one. Cell automaton is a abstract computer model used in this project to compute a Collatz function. It's represented as a grid of cells where each cell changes based on the states of its surrounding cells, called its neighborhood. This is done by local rules. Here's animation, the common scheme of life of famous cellular automaton. Our objective was to develop cellular automata that significantly reduce the time it takes to verify the Collatz conjecture through only basic local rules by cutting down on trajectory. The iterative nature of cellular automata suggests the connection to the Collatz function. And in this way, we want to improve upon the speed of current methods of verifying the conjecture. A topic of significance in this project is the Turing machine. It's an abstract computer model that is used to carry out any numerical or symbolic manipulation. The halting problem is a longstanding open problem in computational theory that asks how you can determine whether a given Turing machine will halt or run on infinitely given its initial rules and state. There exist, however, Turing machines that are capable of mimicking Collatz-like functions. And because our understanding of these functions is limited, only a solution to the Collatz problem will shed further light on the halting problem, as their halting problems are unsolved. Two existing CAs make use of tagging rules rather than basic local rules in order to mimic the Collatz function. To do this, the tagging rules place the initial iterates digits on an infinite line and then label certain digits followed by certain other digits. They then transform those digits differently from non-tagged ones. However, tagging becomes increasingly difficult as the length of the in initial iter increases, making implementation next to impossible. In this project, we designed three different cell automata that compute a Collatz function. In general, the design consists of a grid of cells uh, with a predefined first row, a number of states a cell can suit, the neighborhood for any cell, and uh, evolution laws based on which these cells will evolve. The first one uses space two. It has this two-dimensional infinite grid. And the neighborhoods for the yellow cell are uh, shown in gray. And here are the states the cell can assume. And these are the rules uh, based on which cells evolve. They're divided into sections based on the position of the evolving cell in relation to the entire iterate. Each diagram shows a rule and shows its current neighborhood and the uh, next state of the evolving cell. Here's animation showing uh, this CA being implemented. As you can see, successive rows will contain successive iterates, and the trail of green cells at the end verifies the conjecture. Next, CA uses space four. It has the same grid as before, and the neighborhood of the yellow cell are again shown in gray. And these are the states of the cells. And these are the rules for this CA, dividing sections based on the evolving digit in relation to the iterate. And this one shows the animation for this CA. And the pink cells uh, in a trail at the end means 
the inputs reach one and verify the conjecture for this input. Our final CA was implemented in base three in three dimensions. The grid is an infinite two-layer chessboard with cubicle cells. The states are split into both the digits and the parities that an iterate can take on. The bottom layer will represent transformations of successive iterates as computed by the calls function. The neighborhood is shown here, and in the next diagram, you'll see, in the next slide, you'll see these diagrams. And they are the rules for the bottom layer. They are again split into categories based on the position of the digit in relation to the actual iterate. The top layer, on the other hand, tra um, mimics transformation of partial sums of successive digits of an iterate in order to determine what parity that iterate has, and in other words, determine what part of the calls function to apply. The neighborhood is shown here and is represented in the next slide with these diagrams. Finally, an example of this CA on the bottom layer running shows initial iterate seven, and you'll see that successive rows show successive iterates as computed by the CA, and ultimately, a trail of ones and twos represents verification of the conjecture for initial input seven. So each of our CA has an advantage in computer cost function by cutting down the trajectory. In particular, the base two CA skips all even iterates, greatly reducing the trajectory. For example, given initial input six, Whereas using current methods, we would have to calculate this entire trajectory. Using our base 2 CA, we skip all the even iterates and merely have to compute three of them. So in designing our CAs, we needed to convert the problem of mapping an entire iterate into the problem of transforming digits individually. And the bases are chosen so that we can most efficiently mimic the call loss function and most effectively cut the trajectory. Each of the bases allow relatively easy implementation of the function. In particular, the base two CA can simulate x over two by removing all trailing zeros and three x of one by appending a one to the right of the iterate and adding this to itself. Using these number theoretic properties, we determine the evolution loss and categorize the rules based on the position of the evolving cell. Finally, we found significant reduction in total stopping time as computed by all three of our CAs. In particular, our base 2 CA was the most efficient of the three, modifying the calls function to merely t of n equals 3n plus 1 divided automatically by all powers of 2 that divide 3n plus 1. In this way, we found that our base 2 CA reduced total stopping time computed by current methods to only 32.2%, a little under a third of what is calculated by current methods. One important implication of our project is the potential of parallel computing. To compute several iterates at the same time, we can put for, uh, all of them on the first row and let the CA run. Uh, this gives our CA a computer power along the, power, uh, along the lines of quantum computing, which greatly exceeds current sequential methods. And here is an animation showing computing three iterates at the same time. So, with our CA, we reduce the runtime in terms of number of iterations to just constant on average compared to current method, which is linear. With parallel computing, this is further improved, which reduces the runtime in terms of number of bits in the input on average to also just constant, whereas current method is linear as well. Furthermore, notice that it takes almost 1.5 million iterations of the calls function in order to verify the conjecture for the two, first two to the 14th natural numbers. Using our parallel computing method combined with the trajectory reduction of our CA base two, you'll see that we only need 102 iterations simultaneously of the calls function. Um, you'll notice that there doesn't appear to be a bar underneath the number 102, but that's because it's so small you can't see it. So. So our project also has implication uh, in terms of the number of theoretic traits of the cost function, such as the distribution of the iterates modular powers of two. This may give evidence to an existing heuristic argument about Carlos conjecture. Furthermore, it has implication in the holding problem. Uh, it's known that there, is not, there does not exist a single algorithm that can decide the holding problem for all two machines. However, our project may give some insights into whether there exists specific algorithm for specific Turing machines. Finally, better understanding of the halting problem may lead to progress towards an instant proof or disproof of all natural number conjectures requiring an algorithm to verify. 
Most famously, these include Goldbach's conjecture and the Riemann hypothesis. Obviously, such conjectures' conclusions may yield great insights into the distribution of primes, um, which may imply that um, current public key cryptography, which relies on the difficulty of quickly factorizing large numbers, may be rendered transparent, which may drastically influence current financial security. There are several questions may be asked in the future for future research. First, we can try to modify our CA design, such as by making the grid finite. Uh, for example, you can make a, try to make a toroidal. Also, we can try to make our evolution loss depend entirely on the previous generation of the iterate. We can also try to exploit certain repeating patterns in the CA to speed up the implantation. Also, we can try to apply our parallel computing method to other iterative computational problems. In conclusion, we've developed three cellular automata that use only basic local rules in order to significantly reduce the time it takes to verify the call's conjecture by cutting down on trajectory. We've also developed implementations for two of these automata, one in base two and the other in base four. Finally, we've taken advantage of the tremendous parallel computing power of cellular automata in order to even more vastly efficiently compute the cause function. Many thanks go to following James Chen, who is our mentor, George Washington University for hosting this competition, the Siemens Foundation and the College Board for giving us this opportunity, the judges for your time, and all who came to this presentation.